going on everybody how the heck are you doing i just wanted to check in with you guys and i wanted to talk and reply to mrs or ms laura denton and first and foremost much love to everybody out there huge hugs and um you guys are all our extended family here so let's go over this laura denton ms laura denton all food is created by god for us to eat we are no longer beholden to the old laws for Jesus Christ was the perfect sacrifice for us once and for all on the altar of the cross to which he died. He was then buried, then rose again on the third day. Amen. So <clears throat> the only statement that is incorrect in this actual comment is the, the, where it says we are no longer beholden to the old laws. That is incorrect. If you took that part out, the rest of this would be true. And before you jump into it and say all food is created by God for us to eat, we must absolutely define what food is. And if we don't know what food is, well, we can get into a lot of trouble when we attempt to say so that something is food. Um, first and foremost, some people say, um, like cannibals, they consider humans food. So to them, if all food has been made cling, then boiling up little Bobby, you know, he was sick anyway, and eating him for dinner wouldn't be a bad deal. So <clears throat> we must define what food is. Let's take a little quick look. Leviticus 11. This is where it, it, a complete dietary code. If you, don't, if you have any questions about what you should eat, Leviticus 11 is for you. And Yahuwah spoke unto El Moshe and to El Aaron, saying to, unto them, Speak unto the children of Yashrael, saying, These are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. First, whatsoever parts the hoof and is cloven-footed and chews the cud among the beasts, that ye shall eat. All right, so right out of the gate, we know that if it parts the hoof and is cloven-footed and chews the cud, two very important things because when it chews the cud that is a totally different digestive system than things that just completely eat it and it goes into them and it can hurt us right if it has these special digestive systems with it chews the cud it's cling for us because it has eaten essentially cling food it digested cling food verse four nevertheless these shall ye not eat of them that chew the cud or of them that divide the hoof as the camel because he chews the cud, but divides not the hoof, he is unclean to you. All right, right? So camel has not a divided hoof. Don't eat the camels. And the coney, because he chews the cud, but divides not the hoof, he is unclean to you. And I looked up a coney here, and because I wasn't exactly sure what we were looking at. And that is not, that is a carcass, and I did want to define that as well. This is what it says a, a coney is. So it's like this little, I don't know, it's this little squirrel looking thing or something. I don't know. It, it, it's a, it says hyrax, but I looked up coney, so I don't know if that's real or not. But anyway, don't eat the coney. He's, if he chews the cud but divides not the hoof, he's unclean to you. He looked like a rodent. And then we talk about the hair. And the hair, because he chews the cud but divides not the hoof, he is unclean to you. Right, so uh, a hair has like little toes, little fingers and things with, na with nails at the end of them. So it doesn't have a hoof. So that's how we know and how we identify the food. And the swine, though he divides the hoof and be cloven-footed, yet he chews not the cud, he is unclean to you. Of their flesh shall ye not eat, and their carcass shall ye not touch. They are unclean to you. So we shouldn't touch the carcass of them, and the definition of a carcass is a dead body. But I do know that pigs and swine and various other things of this nature do carry other diseases that are, it can make a, a human go blind. They're very bad things, um, horrible things. You can kill them if you eat this stuff. So uh, very important that we understand this. Nine, these shall ye eat of all that are in the waters. Whatsoever has fins and scales in the waters, in the seas and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. Okay, so if it has fins and scales, so we wouldn't eat octopus, we wouldn't eat sushi, I don't believe, I, I don't think sushi is a clean animal, um, and it's raw, <clears throat> which I, I don't know if that's even a problem or not. Verse 10, 
And all that have not fins and scales in the seas and in the rivers, of all that move in the waters, of any living thing which is in the waters, they shall be an abomination to you. So basically everything else, lobsters, crabs, shrimp, all of it, they, they shall be even an abomination unto you. Ye shall not eat of their flesh, but ye shall have their carcasses in abomination. So you shouldn't even be touching the carcasses of these things. They're, they're, they're unclean animals. Whatsoever has no fins or scales in the waters, that shall be an abomination unto you. And these are they which shall have an abomination among the fowls. These shall not be eaten. They are an abomination. The eagle the, and the osprey and the osprey and the vulture and the kite after his kind, every raven after his kind, and the owl and the nighthawk and the cow and the hawk after his kind, and the little owl and the cormorant and the great owl and the swan and the pelican and the gear eagle and the stork, the heron after her kind, and the lapwing and the bat. All fowls that creep going up on all four, four shall be an abomination to you. Guys, everything here you should not ever eat. They just, they, they can eat very bad things and it's okay for them, but it would kill us. 21. Yet these may ye eat of every flying creeping thing that goes upon all four, which have legs above their feet to leap withal upon the earth. Even these of them ye may eat, the locust after his kind, and the bald locust after his kind, and the beetle after his kind, and the grasshopper after his kind, but all other flying creeping things which have four feet shall be an abomination to you. And for these ye shall be unclean. Whosoever touches the carcass of them shall be unclean until even. And whosoever bears aught of the carcass of them shall wash his clothes and be unclean until even. The carcasses of every beast which divides the hoof and is not cloven-footed nor chews the cud are unclean unto you. Everyone that touches them shall be unclean. And whatsoever goes up on his paws among all ban manner of beasts that go on all four, those are unclean to you. Whosoever touches their carcass shall be unclean until even. So that you're not to eat your dogs. You're not supposed to eat the dogs. And he that bears the carcass of them shall wash his clothes and be unclean until evening. They are unclean unto you. Almost done. These also shall be unclean that unto you among the creeping things that creep upon the earth. The weasel and the mouse and the tortoise after his kind. No eating the turtles, guys. No, no tortoise. <laughs> and the ferret and the chameleon and the lizard and the snail and the mole. These are unclean to you among all that creep. Whosoever touches them when they be dead shall be unclean until the evening. And upon whatsoever any of them, when they are dead, does fall, it shall be unclean. Whether it be any vessel of wood or raiment or skin or sack, whatsoever vessel it be, wherein any work is done, it must be put in water and it shall be unclean until the evening. So it shall be cleansed. So this is talking about the dead dying on your stuff and you have you need to clean it. There's, there's, there's problems, right? There's bacteria and there's stuff that our creator has created that he knows will hurt us. And so he gave us a guideline and a guide life to, to life, right? And this is right here. If we ignore this, I, I don't know what to say. We, we, might, we might be fools. 34. Um, 33, actually. And every earthen vessel wherein any of them falls whatsoever it is in shall be unclean and ye shall break it. And so this is like a, a pot or whatever it is. If, if there's an unclean animal that touches that and it's the dead is in it. Um, you're supposed to break it and not use it again. Uh, verse 35, And everything where upon any part of their carcass falls shall be unclean, whether it, it be oven or ranges for pots, they shall be broken down, for they are unclean, and, you shall, you, and shall be unclean unto you. Nevertheless, a fountain or pit wherein there is plenty of water shall be clean, but that which touches their carcass shall be unclean. Um, so, I'm not going to, actually I will. Let me, let me roll through this whole thing right here. <clears throat> Never, let's see. Um, nevertheless, the foundation or pit wherein there's plenty of water shall be clean. The first 37, if any part of their carcass shall fall upon any sowing seed, which is in, to be sown, it shall be clean. So basically it's saying that if a dead animal falls upon your grain, um, it's not, it's not going to hurt, it's not going to hurt the grain, right? You can still use the grain to, to sow seed, but if any water be put upon the seed and any part of their carcass fall upon, it shall be unclean to you, right? Because the parasitic, whatever it is, is going to get into this stuff. Um, very good advice at the very least. 39. And if any beast of which ye may eat die, he that touches a carcass thereof shall be unclean until the evening. And he that eats of the carcass of it shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the evening. He also that bears the carcass of it shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the evening. 
And every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth shall be an abomination. It shall not be eaten. Whatsoever goes upon the belly and whatsoever goes upon all four or whatsoever has more feet among all creeping things of that that creep upon the earth, them ye shall not eat for they are an abomination, right? So the centipedes don't eat those. Um, don't eat iguanas, any of that jive. Ye shall not make yourselves abominable with any creeping thing that creeps. Neither shall ye make yourselves unclean with them that ye should be defiled thereby. For I am Yahuwah Elohekim. Ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves and ye shall be holy. For I am holy. Neither sh shall ye defile yourselves with any manner of creeping thing that defiles, that creeps upon the earth. You should touch these things in any creepy manner that you're thinking for i am yahuwah that brings you up that brings you up out of the land of mitzram to be your elohim and he's talking to you guys he is talking to you if you want him to be your elohim this is it these are the guidelines these are the books we're supposed to keep <clears throat> so that is that is the thing and um and he says at the end for ye shall therefore be holy <clears throat> for i am holy this is the Torah of the beasts and of the fowl and of every living creature that moves in the waters and of every creature that creeps upon the earth to make a difference between the uncling and the cling and between the beasts that may be eaten and the beasts that may not be eaten. So I'm going to end it back here for Miss Laura Denton and to anybody else who is curious about these. It, it, when you define food as of Leviticus 11, yes, that is food that we should eat. But also there is stuff that is not considered food that we should not eat. But we have to know the Torah to understand this. And when, it says, when she says we are no longer beholden to the old laws, that is absolutely incorrect. From the beginning of the book to the very end of the book, the main point of everything is a communication walk with our creator. It's not a set and forget. It is not a raise your hand at eight years old. It is not uh, say a few prayers, bless the pork and eat it and, and walking contrary to what our creator wants us to walk. There is a walk and it begins in the Torah. I wouldn't know any of this if I didn't read the Torah. This is None of this is my opinion. This is simply me parroting what our creator has said and what he had wished for us in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. I hope this helps. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I'm out.